Hello and welcome to Avplan EFB. This is the first of a series of webinars designed to help you get the most out of your EFB. In this session, we'll be walking through getting set up. I'll be taking a look at settings and we'll get familiar with the app. I'll show you where everything is and we'll take a look at making sure that everything in the background is properly set up to ease the use of the EFB for you. Let's get started. When you first open our plan and log in, you'll be presented with this page we see in front of us now. Avplan is very much centered around planning, and so your flight plan or navlog, as we like to call it, will always be positioned here on the left. At the moment, what you see here is a list of your stored plans. These are all the plans that you've uh, flown in the past and their status, aircraft call sign, IFR or VFR, and their filed status there. To reuse one of these old flight plans, you simply tap on the uh, flight plan itself and it will open the old flight plan. Here, here is your nav log and you can overwrite this and clear the times and use this plan. Or if you want to start a new plan, which we're going to do for the purpose of today's demonstration, we simply tap new plan here. And so your nav log will always appear on the left here and your map on the right, except for if you'd like to tuck it away, you can tap the hamburger icon here that tucks the flight plan underneath the map, allowing you more space, which is ideal if you're working from, say, an iPad mini. We'll be discussing display options in a later webinar. Just wanted to show you that now, as it's a handy feature for us to be using as we walk through settings. So as you can see, our plan is configured very much with planning in mind. Your flight plan will remain here, and as you build it, it'll be reflected over here on the map. So what happens on the map is reflected in the navlog, and what's happened in the navlog is reflected on the map, as obvious as it sounds, you do point that out to people. So your previous uh, call sign, the last call sign you used, will be up here, and we'll default to that. So for the purposes of today's demonstration, we'll be sticking here as we walk through the uh, various settings of the app. So I've planned is split into seven different sections as well as the nav log. And these we will be toggling through. We have planning here, which is a sort of checklist that allows you to uh, ensure that you've covered all the areas that you need to before you go flying. En route is your map. And we'll be looking at, an, in the next uh, webinar, we'll be looking at map settings and how to customize the map, take things on and off. Terminal pertains to airports, and this is where you'll find all your airport information, and we'll be drilling down on that in the next webinar too. We also have a detailed weather section, and we'll be looking at that in a separate webinar, and documentation here. All our documentation is in here, and again, we'll be discussing that at a later date. Notepad here with my email address if you need to get hold of me to ask questions. And settings, and this is what I'd like to focus on in this short webinar today. So let's begin by tucking the navlog underneath the settings page, as we won't be using that for this section that we walk through. And let's start with data downloads. One of the things that plan likes to do is we like to present a lot of our information to you graphically. And so with our data downloads, we've presented you with a map of the country and in fact, a map of the world, if you are a, a worldwide user. And as you can see here, I have New Zealand downloaded too. Australia is split into five different sections, which pays respect to the fact that your iPad may not have uh, the largest storage capacity. So we allow you to download just the area that you need. So, for instance, if you live, as I do, in the southeast corner here, you can download Canberra, Sydney, Melbourne and Tasmania and uh, keep the rest of the country uh, spare. But if you do need to perhaps, say, visit Queensland or, uh, in my case, South Australia, where the border restrictions are now lifted, you simply tap on the area that you would like to visit and you can download it there. And then you can delete it again or you can leave it to expire by uh, tapping leave to expire. So if you don't want it to update through the next cycle, you can leave it to expire. 
And what I want to say about downloads is that when you uh, download the data, that stores everything on your actual iPad. So, um, and that's why we allow you to choose. For instance, a lot of us might not go to Pass uh, very often, and so we don't need to download Pass. When I say download onto the iPad, what I mean is it brings in everything you need. We assume you want your charts, your maps, your ursa your uh, if you're an ifr user your daps and so on and so forth so we bring in all the data that you need so you don't need to download any individual maps or charts unless of course you want to in that case you can come down here to other downloads and download the charts that you desire for instance the planning chart the pca is very useful you can see i've downloaded that here you might want to just take a look at perhaps uh, a Queensland chart, so you can go ahead and download those if you choose to. And scrolling down here, we also have some uh, other charts, documentation, synthetic vision. If you are going to be using the synthetic vision, you might download some of those there. So back and then other downloads is where you can download uh, charts that you uh, might want to add to the data downloads that we bring in. So a quick word about data downloads. If it's green, it's good to go. If it's yellow or red, it needs updating. Now the data validity will always be up here in the top right hand corner. And I think our services, our services have about 14 or so cycles a year. So you'll see those updated there as uh, our services cycle through their map. Uh, if it's green, it's good to go. Uh, if it's red, you'll have a big update button here. You press that update button and that will bring in and start downloading the uh, required documents. A little uh, panel will pop up here and you can navigate away from the downloads page while it's downloading. You don't need to be present for it. So just allow it to download in the background and uh, go ahead and start building your flight plan. Next up is user settings. Let's take a look at that now. Now, uh, I didn't introduce myself and I apologize for that. My name is Krisha and I work on the help desk at Avplan. And so I see a lot of the problems coming in from, or user issues coming in from users that are often pertaining to not being properly set up. So let's take a quick walk through settings now, making sure that you are properly set up before you go ahead and go flying with Avplan EFB. Firstly, when you first uh, uh, subscribe to Avplan EFB, you will uh, be invited to sign up and uh, add your password here. If you want to manage your password or change it, you can do so here. This username needs to be um, remain the same as this is how we identify you across all your devices. So don't change your username inside the app, please. Automatic weather downloads allows us to uh, download the weather in the background without you having to push for weather. So do make sure you have that ticked on. Waypoint auto sequencing is exactly what it says it is. It will sequence uh, your waypoints from one to another. So do make sure that you have that turned on too. If you want to sync um, and use uh, play with your flight sims, we, we support Xplane Elite and um, FSX here, and there's our ISP there. Airspace warnings, runway warnings, terrain warnings are presented to you by form of notifications. So on the en route page, as you're flying, a notification will pop up here um, informing you of if you have these ticked, uh, airspace changes if you're about to taxi onto a runway and terrain warnings if you're flying close to terrain. So it's worth having these switched on if you want to get these notifications. Audible notifications and warnings, we're bringing you your notifications right into your ears via your Bluetooth headset here. If you choose to turn this on, you can just uh, Bluetooth your headset to Avplan here. You can also bring it in through the speakers if you're fortunate enough to be flying a jet or a glider. Uh, and you can choose the gender of the person who delivers the audio notifications for you. This is Avril and this is Avery. You can also choose which type of uh, notifications you would like to hear, airspace, runway, so on and so forth. A particularly useful one here is battery status and charge. This will warn you every 25% until you get down under 20, then it'll warn you frequently. And uh, this is a good time to remind you to fly with backup uh, battery chargers, portable chargers, if your aircraft isn't equipped with a USB port. Okay, let's take a look back 
to use the settings now. Uh, automatic data download. This will automatically download any updated uh, data in the background when you are connected to Wi-Fi. We won't try and do it if you're connected to, connected to a cellular network. And if you try to download when you are connected to a cellular network, we will issue a warning, making sure that you know you're, you're sure uh, before you go ahead and do any downloads. Default aircraft icon allows you to change your icon. We default to the piston single, which is what the majority of our customers use. But of course, we have customers uh, who fly jets, helicopters, Chinooks, twins, and pit specials. So go ahead and choose the icon that you prefer right here. This is a print option for you to allow you to print page plates one per page. And this is auto waypoints in plan, which we won't be talking about in this webinar, but in a future one. So we'll leave that for now. Full screen flight plan allows you to have an actual nav log, your nav log that was um, down the side in a full screen presentation here. And uh, this then gives you an extra pane down the bottom. So you just need to toggle along the bottom of that pane to change. This also gives you an extra uh, column here for fuel, which I'll show you when we dig down into flight planning. Back to settings. Some important settings that I think are worth uh, a big notice uh, at this stage are the ability to sync your flight plans and aircraft. Now, we uh, allow three devices per subscription, and we encourage you to put Avplan on all three devices across platforms. So if you're an Android user, you could have Avplan on your I iPhone plus your Android tablet, or you could have it on your Android tablet and your Android phone or your iPad and your iPhone, so on and so forth. And we allow you to sync across three, but in order to do so, you need to have sync flight plans and sync aircraft turned on on all three devices to allow seamless syncing. Furthermore, if you do have these uh, synced on, it will sync to our uh, Avplan cloud. And that means that if you lose a flight plan or accidentally delete an aircraft profile, we might be able to fish it out for you. So it's a good backup there. So do ensure you have these turned on. Here also your pilot name and uh, phone will be uh, here and your capabilities that you can add here. Your next details or IFIS if you're in New Zealand, your next details here, you'll only have to fill in once, but once you do, it will allow you uh, to file seamlessly inside Avplan to NAPES, file a flight plan. It'll also give you all your updated weather. So once you've uh, signed into NAPES, you remain signed into NAPES until uh, NAPES asks you to reset your password, which I believe they do every 180 days, I think. Okay, do also make sure that you have the data ticked for the country that you're in. And if you're visiting another country, have the data ticked for that country too. Some other settings here that we don't need to drill down into too much. I'm going to skip through those as they're more sort of advanced features. Just to let you know, you can change your colors. I've changed my head, HUD text color from a default green to an orange. You can change any of the colors here by simply tapping on the thing you'd like to change, selecting the color and pressing save. And back to user settings where uh, we complete the lose the settings section. Let's take a little look at notifications. These are the things that you can choose out plan to notify you of. These are the device notification settings. You can check your subscription here. So if you log in and it says your subscription has expired, this is where you check to see when you need to renew. And this is a good time for me to tell you, don't renew in the app. Renew on our website where it's at least 30% cheaper. Apple do take a commission uh, for hosting in their app. So we've bypassed that legally by allowing um, you to purchase on our website. So for instance, the Australian VFR subscription here, that's $179.99 is only 109 on our website. So do make sure you don't renew in app there. Okay, app plan live tracking. We'll be talking about this uh, more in the future, but this is just the settings for your live tracking, uh, allowing you to uh, show your visibility or hide your call sign or share with only certain groups. Also a link here to our live tracking website and an ability to configure your groups there. 
the aircraft type database we'll be talking about entirely on a separate webinar as we walk through how to get your aircraft set up and how to edit your aircraft when it is set up. External devices, we allow you to pair to a series of external devices here and uh, you can find more about uh, external devices on our website under Avplan Omni. And here is a direct link to support and the help center. So we have a um, full-time help desk and uh, we have two modes of contacting us. You can contact us via the chat mode, which will bring up a chat window, which is staffed uh, usually Monday to Friday. Uh, although if it is urgent, do mark it urgent. We will see it and we will try and help you out. You can also send us an email there through our contact form. And that concludes our first webinar, Avplan EFB getting set up. Join me for our next webinar where we walk through map settings and customization of Avplan EFB. Thank you for your time.